As you know from the Watch Me First video, we assume we've read Chapter 8 with all the details of Dr Elizabeth Pope's Literature Review Project. So I'll start with just a quick review of the six stages of the project in Table 8.1 on page 168. The first stage of the project is demonstrated in two videos. Part 1 includes creating the NVivo project, adding and organising electronic literature resources, and undertaking initial descriptive coding. Part 2 continues with writing memos, organising the descriptive codes into categories, and writing a first draft. The second stage video reviews, reflects on, and refines what was accomplished in stage 1. Stages 3 and 4 are combined into the next video, which involves adding a second round of literature and managing it in the same way, and then reflecting on all that has been done so far in order to identify themes in the reviewed literature. The final video combines stages 5 and 6, which involves extracting coded data in order to write the second draft of the literature review, and then continuing to add additional literature over time. In this video, I'll walk you through stage 1 of the case illustration of Elizabeth's exploratory literature review, exploring the literature on interfaith dialogue. You can see in Table 8.2 an overview of the steps of the first phase, the preliminary partial literature review. Because phase 1, identify and become familiar with resources, wasn't done in NVivo, I'm not going to be discussing that phase of Elizabeth's project in this video. So, to begin phase 2, organise and initially categorise all the resources. 2A required Elizabeth to create a new project and import all the marked up electronic resources into it as individual sources. Having created a new project, she imported each PDF file one by one into the internals folder. Because I'm showing you a more recent version of Elizabeth's project, you can see that there are already several sources in here. However, I've downloaded a new PDF to add to the project to show you how that's done. You can either import PDF files using the relevant icon in the data menu, or by right-clicking in the empty space of a list view, which is what I'm going to do, and choosing Import PDFs. This file by SNAR has already been renamed according to the naming convention that Elizabeth used for all her sources, which is author, year, and then title. When I click Open and then OK, the file will be imported into NVivo. Doing so one file at a time, as I'm doing, gives us the opportunity to alter the source properties, such as renaming, adding a description, applying colour and so on. But I'm not going to do that now. I can always come back and change source properties later on. Elizabeth's next step was to record the full citation and abstract for each piece of literature in a memo that's linked to the source. Because of the way Elizabeth named the sources, when there are lots of them in a project, it's easy to find the one you're looking for in the list view just by organising it alphabetically. To link a memo to this source, I can just right-click and choose on the Link a New Memo option. I'll name it using the same convention, so it's easy to see which memo corresponds to which PDF source. The process Elizabeth went through in order to add the citation was to first bring up the article in Adobe and organise her screen so that she could see the article and NVivo at the same time. She then found the information about the article and added it to the memo using the APA citation requirements. I'll just do that by copy and paste. The next step was to put the abstract and keywords into the memo as well, and she did that by copying and pasting from Adobe. You'll see that when you do that from Adobe, hard returns are inserted at the end of each line. This is just a formatting issue. Elizabeth didn't particularly like it herself, so she went to the effort of just removing those hard returns before moving to the next step. Having inserted the citation, the abstract and the keywords, Elizabeth was now done with the Adobe version of the file and with the memo at this point. 
You can now see that like most of the other sources at the top level of the internals folder, SNAR source has a memo link icon adjacent to it, reminding us that there's a link memo. Hovering over the icon flags up the name of the memo, and we can also access the memo by right-clicking on the PDF source. The next step was to organise the literature into specific subject areas by creating subfolders underneath internals. Elizabeth did this simply by right-clicking and choosing to create a new folder, and then giving it the appropriate name. I'm not actually going to do that right now because it's already been done in this version of the project. I can see that there are subfolders underneath the top level internals folder because of this little arrow icon here. Clicking on it reveals the subfolders. SNAR source is an empirical study on interfaith dialogue, so it fits into that folder. To move it into that folder, all we need to do is to drag it from the top level and drop it on the folder. When we now choose the folder, we can see that SNAR's source has been moved into this folder along with 13 other sources that are already there. I can see that there are a total of 14 sources by looking at the status bar at the bottom left of the screen. Elizabeth organised each source into folders in this way, so that in the end every source was stored in one of these subfolders, and there were none left at the top level of the internals folder. In the first phase of Elizabeth's project when she initially did this, you can see in table 8.2 that she created nine folders. What we see here is the result of editing them down in a later phase, so that she ended up with only these five folders organising her literature resources towards the end of the process. Next, Elizabeth wanted to apply relevant descriptive codes to references within literature sources and to take notes about them. So I'm going to open up SNAR source and show you the process that Elizabeth went through. You can see that the highlighting that Elizabeth had previously done in Adobe has carried over when the source was imported into Envivo, and as she discusses in the chapter 8, this highlighting served as a roadmap to inform the descriptive coding. When coding in Envivo, it's often useful to have coding stripes on view so that you can see nodes appear in the margin area, so I'll just turn those on in the view main menu. I'm choosing nodes recently coding as that keeps nice up to date as we continue coding. Part of the purpose of Elizabeth's literature review was to understand how interfaith dialogue had been studied in the literature previously. This meant that she needed to capture and reflect on things like research questions, purposes, methodologies, modes of analysis and so on. So this statement highlighted in yellow represents part of the purpose of this research. So if Elizabeth was going to code it as such, she would first need to select the reference and then one way of coding is to right-click over a selected reference. And you can see that there are various coding options to choose from. For example, we can code to recent nodes if we've used nodes already in this work session. We can code in vivo, which means using the selected text as a node label. That's not relevant in this instance because we've selected a couple of sentences. So I'm just going to choose the code option. And you can see that all of the nodes that have been created previously are listed in this window to choose from. The node that's relevant to the selected reference is Empirical Studies Interfaith Dialogue Research Purpose, so I'm going to find and choose that one. But note that you can also create a new node at this position. Once I click OK, we'll be able to see that node appear in the margin. I'm just going to go to the main nodes area to show you where all these nodes are stored. You can see that lots of them have already been applied to references across many sources. But I also just wanted to show you that you can also code references by dragging and dropping, as well as by right-clicking like I showed before. So for example, I can select a reference, move the list to display the node that I'm looking for, and drag and drop the selected reference onto the node, and you'll see it appear in the margin in the same way. Elizabeth coded relevant references in all the imported PDF sources with descriptive codes in this way. 
In the first stage of her literature review, this resulted in 141 descriptive codes, which she used to mark the relevant portions of text that she'd identify when initially reading through each article and highlighting in Adobe. The vast majority of references were coded with only one descriptive node, not with multiple ones, as you can read about in Chapter 8.